On this episode of Rugged Expeditions, we're going back to Africa. We're going after probably the best looking Cape Buffalo I've ever laid eyes on, but he may be also the toughest one we've ever had to tangle with. And while we're at it, we're gonna have ourselves a little caveman style cookout right out there in the African bush, and we're gonna be doing it Rugged X style. Stay tuned, baby. Let the magic happen. Yes. Brought to you by Gunworks, the long range experience. Typically, we always come to Tanzania late September through October. That's kind of our time to be here. But this year, the rain has come early and it's come in buckets. In true Rugged X fashion today, we've loaded up all of our goodies and we're leaving the main camp to drive out a long ways to a remote camp out in the border area where it hasn't been hunted for quite a while. So we're excited about that because there's supposed to be a lot of buffalo out there. The theory is that the rain will get this new grass growing. And in these outer areas where it's already had big fires go through, it should be tremendous buffalo hunting. So in Africa, water is everything and the rivers are just teeming with wildlife. The rain really makes it hard to get around. Even when it's not raining, the river bottoms have turned to muck, the roads have gotten all muddy, and getting stuck is just part of life at this time of year. While the guys were getting the truck unstuck, I noticed that there was a bunch of vultures circling, and then I saw them landing, and being the curious guy that I am, you never know what the hell might be there. So I figured, hey, let's go check it out and see what's going on. A ah, little zebra that didn't make it. Nature's tough in Africa. Well, nature's tough everywhere, but Africa's recycling him with these vultures here. I guess vultures gotta eat too. Sorry, little fella. My friends are the only I love the part about hunting in Africa where you've got a lot of tags in your pocket. I mean, whether it's for impala, whether it's for zebra, or something super good eating like hartebeest. Now these are the Liechtenstein hartebeest that are in this part of Tanzania. And you talk about good eating. So when we saw this bull, it was as we say in Tanzania, in Swahili, Chakula time. Bonnie and I are making a fire. We get the vehicle parked over in the shade, but we're gonna cook us up a little rugged X Heart of beast liver, yummy. Good sticks here. What is this wood, Bonnie? Uh, Miombo. 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 Good. He says it's the best for cooking. Yes. yes good. good and if nothing else, this smoke will keep the damn tetsy flies down. So I am in on that. All right. Let's get ourselves a stick. This is a nice hardwood here that has thorns on it, but 
think we can make ourselves a little V. Let's see. Man, I love these knives. All right, let's go see what they got cooking. Okay, they got the liver ready. We got it out of there. Let's go see if we can make a little Rugged X magic here in the, on our new cooking show. Cooking with Al in the bush. A little smudge going here. All right, you know, I always travel with a packet of spices, just an old habit. I don't really know how it got started or why, but kind of one of those deals that, you know, you never know when you might need some. Got some Hunter's Edge in our secret spice that we make up. Can't tell you what it is, otherwise it wouldn't be a secret. A little of that on there. Oh, baby. Look at that, huh? Make your tongue beat your brains out. That's going on there. That's going on there. All right, we're ready. Let's see what happens here. We're gonna get it up kind of high. Starters about them like that. A lot of guys will go ahead and let those coals get down further, but I'm starving, so <laughs> I'm putting the meat on while it's still going like this. Let the magic happen. Yes. Should we give it a try? I'm thinking we're ready. At least on this outside edge, we can always keep cooking the inside of it. You know, there's a reason why in your pack, you know, you got all kinds of goodies in there, but I was talking about the spices earlier, but also why not just have a piece of rolled up, you know, aluminum foil in there? Comes in handy for so many things like this. Uh-oh, look at this. Mm -hmm. The best liver. I've ever had in my life. Dylan, check this out. We're gonna cut you a bit. What the? Yeah, there's some more in case we can <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're having some filet as well. Try that liver. Hmm? Isn't that something? You know, and I don't really eat a lot of liver when I'm in the States, but yeah. there's something about, you know, game liver that I really, really enjoy. Now we're getting down the good stuff here. Okay. Um, well, the main one is, you know, the Hunter's Secrets spice that we have. You know, it's good for coughs, cold, sore moles, pimples on the bean ball, grows hair and ability ball, whiskers on the jaws of death, pulses the tooth, sweetens the breast, creates space that time alone cannot erase. Okay. Obviously, well, I need some of that. It's good for everything. Here, I'm going to give you just a little bit. We got a pace where it's still early in the trip, but I'm gonna put it, hang your meat off, hang your meat over this aluminum foil here. We'll give you a little. Oh, yeah, look at that, huh? Can you have too much garlic on it? I don't think so. No. Keep the vampires away. Yep. Okay, go for it. I think the coals are just about right. All right, we ready? Wapi and Bogo. We just saw two bulls right here on the side of the road, and one of them looks like a dandy, big drops, but they've taken off running down over this hill into this valley. But you think no, definitely gonna follow. we can catch Number up to them? Things. We're going to try and. Someday you should just gotta take the ones that you see by the road and then go for it and see what happens. The reality is that most of the time when we're buff hunting, we get in as close as we can before we ever try a shot. But sometimes you got no choice. And these two bulls were not gonna let us get in there any closer to them. It's quite a long shot. Thank God I got my gun work skull in 375 Ruger. The one next to the tree, huh? OK. 
Uh, he's the one on the left. Just wait for him to turn. This is a rifle that I feel confident in making a shot like this. On that first shot, I could tell right away the way he humped up and the way his leg was, that that was a good shot. It hit exactly where I was planning. But now we still got to go follow him up. The one on the right. And Buffalo can be tough. It's the one on the right. Really tough. Just turn it too We've got blood right here, a pile of it. You can see when he took off, his, his front leg's all screwed up. He's up right here. Go. Wait, 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 wait. It's a rumble. It's a rumble. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this other one, that little one. Once you've got a wounded buffalo, my policy is keep shooting, whether that's a Texas hard shot, broadside, whatever you can do, but keep putting lead into him. Jeez Louise. <laughs> How many can he take? Good now. Fantastic shooting. Thanks. Oh, that first shot was incredible. <laughs> just see him when he humped up. That whole that whole <sighs> just wonderful. That I mean hit it nicely, it. It took off up the hill there, carrying the one leg from there is but look at the size of that thing's hooks. Unbelievable. And you know the thing is that, that oh, it continues to amaze me. Is you hit him like that, he's basically dead on his feet. I still go so far. And just on and on, and then hammer him another couple of times. Yeah. What a bull, huh? Jeez Louise. <laughs> How about this, Dylan? Look at the sweep on that, huh? And see, it wasn't until we got close for all of you th look at these horns, you can hear, this is hard. You think, you know, this is, see, this is muddy. He's got a streak right here of hair, but some of these bulls you'll see, but it's a hard bull. Hear that? It was a little bit deceptive at first, but when you get up here, he's got nothing, even, well, he's right in the front, just a little smidge right there, but everything is, what an awesome bull. Fantastic. Look at the width, huh? Look at that. All gnarly, he's been beating the trees up. You can see in here how there's so many flies and stuff, whereas up on the top, they get in there where they can get away from all this and get some breeze coming through, because it's about 120 degrees right now. Yeah. Especially after the tension of following this guy wounded through that grass. It was, that first shot was a good shot. I mean, he was bleeding. Well, yeah. It should be right on the point, isn't it? It is. And we had a lot of blood the whole way down. Yeah. Through that grass, I was getting, I mean, there's so much blood, and he was carrying from watching him on the first shot, he was carrying his front leg as he ran off. The one leg was up. But man, they can just take sign. a beating. That's just part of Cape Buffalo hunting. And look at that spread and great length. Look at the length. The no, great it's a drop. fantastic buffalo. Very, very nice. And a great first shot. That was far. <laughs> the problem they were watching us over that valley, now you're trying to get closer. Dylan? 
Yes, sir. Have I ever told you how much I love my gunwork skull? No. I don't like sort of just enjoy it. I just don't like it. I love it. Matter of fact, if it could cook, I'd marry it. That's how much I love this gun. You have the, when you have the opportunity, you have the confidence in the weapon yeah. that it can do the trick. If you do your end of the job, you know, the gun will do the rest, so. That was a long shot. Thanks to all those boys in Cody, Wyoming at the Gunworks, guys. Thank you. Woo! We got a lot of mouths to feed, and every single ounce of the meat gets utilized by us and the staff.